<laughs> I refuse to answer that. Anyway, I started the recording. Hello. Uh, what's the date today? I forgot. Uh, I can s do. Tell me the date. The sixteenth, May sixteenth. All right. What year is that? Two thousand eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we have uh, May six May sixteenth, two thousand eighteen, and it's our. We resume the practice of channeling for after, uh, I guess, I say a couple of years of, we had the practice before, but then we sort of, sort of dropped that. And I um, mm, thank uh, Carol and Anya for initiating that. They are driving forward behind that. That's wonderful that somebody takes, uh, takes uh, the lead on that. That's wonderful. Um, it's, it happens under Hugh Color. So uh, to join, uh, go on, uh, Facebook, Hucola Private. Search for Hucola Private Group. Join the group, and uh, there you can find Anya. And also, there is a group called Hucola Channeling Practice. That's exactly the group where um, people the the events are announced and where you are discussing. So Hucola Channeling Practice group on Facebook. And uh, right now we do it through Zoom, and I like Zoom in in a way that it is. Uh, mostly egalitarian, it allows you to um, run the meeting from the smartphone. That's what exactly what I do here. So it's 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 very comfortable, and it allows you to record. Uh, so Zoom is a uh, is a uh, free. Uh, somebody is making noise. Uh, I think. Can you mute yourself? Everybody mute yourself unless unless you ask a question. So um, you can still the noise there. Let me mute yourself. Mute you. How do I mute everyone? Is there should be a way? Mute. Okay. All right. Done. Um, so on Zoom, you can run it from a smartphone, and it's free for 40 minutes. And I think it's perfect for for the group meetings. But other options is to do it on Hangouts. Another option is to do it on um, Facebook, Facebook Live, and things of that sort. And Skype also. Skype is pretty good. And on the phone as well, you can meet on the phone. All right, so what do we do? We practice channeling and uh, that's great. I think it is a great service. Uh, what we don't do, it's, it's very important to understand that, you know, what is channeling and uh, the, the, there is no promise that you will be a professional channeler like, like Bashar and, and Jim. It is two different things. One is to be channeling and another thing to have a business of channeling and have money flowing to you. Some people are destined to have, to have that and some people are really good with business. And as Zachariah said, uh, you know, I, have, I know nothing about business and I don't want to deal with it at all. So, so you don't have to have a business of channeling to be a channeler. You can be a channeler without actually, you know, charging people for the sessions. Also, you don't have to do run a YouTube channel and channel for the public. You can do it in private, and many people do that. Um, but I really invite you to to do uh, to start your YouTube channel, record your channelings on. Uh, again, Zoom is great for recordings, and um, uh, just smartphone is great. You can just record video on the phone and upload to YouTube. And uh, the main challenge, I will talk mostly about challenges and how to solve it. Well, the main challenge when you start publishing your things on YouTube, there is a connection between you and the public. And unless you are used to that, there is a big change and a big spiritual flow, which sometimes is very positive and sometimes it is uh, tough, especially if you channel something uh, which causes positive and negative reactions, if it is something bright. Like even when Jim channels, that is, when Jim channels Jesus, there is so much resentment and negativity coming from, you know, Orthodox Christians and things of that sort. So um, my trick on that, my take on that is first to understand that is a service which you do to the humanity and you're protected by the idea of the service. And second, I find it's very useful to publish your videos, not right away, but give them a little time. And sometimes I give it like a day, sometimes I give it a week. And for some videos which are very, which make me vulnerable, vulnerable, I publish them like a month later or two months later. 
And this way you separate with time from your own video. You're not getting attached to it anymore. So when, uh, when people send uh, mixed emotions towards you in this video, it, it doesn't touch you as much. So that's a trick which I recommend. So give it the time and don't publish every video you recorded. Publish uh, some and you can turn it on on YouTube and I feel like if, if there is any negative thing coming to you, you just turn it off like and hide it from the public and then give it a time to uh, give yourself a time to adjust and then publish again. And that helps a lot to, to protect yourself. So lots of people in our community um, uh, do channeling and don't publish. And this way they basically are invisible to others. I know they exist, I know they're good channelers, but there is no YouTube, YouTube um, videos. So um, it doesn't become a, um, it, it, it doesn't have that transformational power to others. It, it's, it's not a full service, I would say. It's, it's partial service, a service, a serve local friends or close friends, but it's not recorded. So I really um, invite you and promote the idea of recording and publishing. I think it's great. I think it is helping uh, a lot of people. It's, it's a huge factor in, uh, in the collective transformation. Uh, it's amazing how much people uh, watch us. Like Jim and I are doing it like for four years and uh, very often we receive a, uh, a letter saying, now I started watching you and I go, I'm going backwards and I am almost reached the, the, the first videos, like watching everything that we, we, that we recorded. And it, it's like, I think uh, it's months of, now it is, um, uh, about a month of uh, of time, or maybe a few months of, of time, total time. Okay, next thing is, uh, any questions so far? Uh, healing, next thing is a healing, like so channeling and healing come together. And for many people, channeling is associated with a huge change in their spiritual design there health design, so it's a big transformation. I would say some people are already there, so some people already made it. For some people, it's very natural to channel. It would be hard for them not to channel. For others, it's uh, a big transformation from being uh, kind of, uh, from not channeling to channeling, to doing um, public work, to being on public, to becoming a public figure, and to opening the connection to lots of strangers. It's a huge, uh, basically there are two, two changes. One from non-channeling to channeling and the second from channeling to go from non-public figure to public figure. Uh, these transformations are big and uh, there is a lot of uh, danger to health and stuff involved and be warned. It is, uh, you know, we have casualties often, like almost every workshop, every, now and then somebody becomes um, uh, suffers from either mental problems or health attacks and stuff of that sort. So uh, we take it easy. It is part of the job. It happens. We, uh, we give a lot of instruction how to deal with it. And uh, it's just part of, the, of our work. So basically take care of yourself. Don't channel when you're drunk. Don't channel if you feel sick or vulnerable. Uh, find a time and place where you feel protected and build your support network. It's your responsibility to take care of your physical body when you do the work. So when you do the channeling, make sure you channel in a friendly, protected environment where all people around are friendly. Don't channel to negative people. Don't channel to uh, the crowd which doesn't accept you. Um, if you're unsure about your state of protection, don't publish the videos for public, publish it like for uh, only for friends, like on Facebook, you can publish it for friends. So like really like take care to be in a friendly environment, create this friendly environment, um, build your local support network, like your family, your local friends, find local healers and build your remote support network. Sometimes it's just one person is enough or sometimes it's a group of people, but Really, like, because you do a spirit work, you get a lot of guidance and a lot of protection from the spirits, and they bring to you uh, 
um, help, you bring to you help. Because you do the service to, for the humanity, because you do the service for people, they bring you a lot of help. So it's up to you to accept this help. So one of the main thing we teach is to accept the gift of channeling and accept the help that comes with that responsibility. So usually I go through a meditation, which is very simple. Uh, are you guys ready? Say or show me that you're ready. Can you hear me? <laughs> All right, good. All right, so let's do a little meditation. It's like a few seconds. So, um, are you ready to... <laughs> Let me let me formulate it better. Are, are you ready to channel? That would be a good question. Okay, answer to yourself. Are you ready to channel? All right. And um, are you ready to accept the help that comes with channeling? Yeah, that's it. Are you ready to accept the help that comes with channel? The help, the help. Are you ready to accept the help that comes? with the gift of channeling. Are you ready to accept the help that comes with the gift of channeling? And say, I accept, I accept, I accept. And thank you for accepting the gift of channeling and say thank you for accepting the help. So it's up to you to build your support network. Now, um, how do you practice? Like I'm mostly talking about what you, not how you channel, but I'm mostly talking how, what do you do you do with the channel and like around the channel. So um, the group setting is, uh, is wonderful. And uh, it's really hard to channel when there is no one receiving your channeling, like channeling to the camera is a little easier, but if you like don't have a camera, it's hard to speak to no one, right? So it's, it's nice to have either, either a camera or better live person who is caring, kind and protective, okay? So finding that friend and exchanging that service to each other of being a good listener and recording and most importantly, taking care of the channel. So for me and Jim, it, is a, it was in the beginning, it was two of us working together and I had my recorder and I was asking questions and I was doing Reiki on Jim and I was making sure Jim feels good. And especially for early channelers like Carla Ruckert and several others, that was a, the caring of the body was a major concern of the, of the carers, of the receivers. So how do you call it? One is a channeler and second one would be a listener and uh, a uh, take, um, caretaker, yeah, caretaker of the channel. So it, 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 it is a, process that takes at least two people. One is a channel and second a, a listener and caretaker. Interviewer, listener, caretaker. So the caretaking part, take it really seriously. One of the uh, responsibilities of a caretaker is to make sure the body is in good shape, not to over um, overwork the body. So it's like normal would be like for the beginner would be like 20 minutes of channeling and then stop or 10 minutes and then stop. Don't go over three hours. Like in the beginning, we had like nonstop uh, channelings and some people would just go forever. And that really caused some, uh, some, some problems on the health issue on both on the physical side and, and spiritual side. Don't, don't want to overdo it. Like we have a, like new channelers who started channeling and then they would channel every day and think that it is now the you know the norm and i would recommend against that do it like sparingly not as much also don't um don't expect that because you became a channeler and because you serve the humanity that you get less challenges you actually get more challenges like lots of people still challenge you and even people who listen to you don't uh, give you as much love as you expect. You're like, when I did my first channel, I expect that everybody would love me after that. And it doesn't happen this way. It just, <laughs> it just happens as usual or even otherwise. Because you disturb the, the fabric of the spiritual matri matrix, so there is a lot of disturbances coming your way. So 
after you channel, expect that things would go weird and take it as easy. I would call it channeling crisis or a crisis of transformation. It's absolutely normal and take it easy. Basically, the main advice, make it positive, take it easy. Whatever happens to you, uh, it's a lesson. And because you are graduated to a new level, you get higher, higher uh, level lessons and you have to work your positivity on a higher level, basically. So whatever happens, take it as a lesson and uh, smile, take it easy and positivize it. Like it's a, be a, a professional positivizer. Make everything into positive, all right? So when you channel, um, there are two options. One is conscious channeling and one is a psychic work. So the difference is very, very tiny. Basically when it is a, no. I made a mistake. One, one is conscious channeling called psychic work, and second is trans channeling, which is Jim, Jim and Basharu. That's what, what, what we do. Like you go into trance and you uh, let the other people, other in personality to speak through you. So in, uh, in psychic work or conscious channeling, you don't leave your body, you're here and you talk to the spirit get the information from the spirit and deliver it to the interviewer or to the listener. And then, so you stay, you stay conscious in conscious channel or psychic work. And then in trans channel and sort of stay away, step away and, um, and let someone else to speak through you. When you do conscious channel and be positive and filter out the negative information and be careful not to harm people and to make, make things positive. And between the channelings, also work on positivity. Take things positively and be a healer. Heal every sickness of yourself and be a healer of situations around you. So uh, that is huge. And uh, we first, when we, on our workshops, we first teach healing and then we Okay, I got a message from Anya, and she somehow didn't. Carol, can you help Anya to to enter the place because she's messaging, but somehow she's she's not capable to enter. Hold on a second. Do you have any questions so far? Hey there. Yeah. Uh huh. So far, so good. Here for All right. Me. Thank you. Uh, any comments, any questions? I lost my train of thought, let me see. Yeah, open the channel. So how do you get money flowing to you? Uh, it doesn't have to be for channel and it can help you. Uh, because you do the service for others, for some mystical reason, because you do the service, which is uh, very important for the spirit, you get a lot of support and, and part of that support can come through money, but it doesn't have to come through money paid for channeling. It can come uh, in a very strange way, like uh, somebody like your relative who you don't have a good relationship with them can, can give you money or some other way. Uh, so do be, be ready to accept the money, be ready to accept uh, the other gifts, be ready to accept health, help with, uh, will be the other like um, place for living, place for work, place for food, uh, like uh, all, all these um, things are taken care of, but they are very often simplistic and you might reject it for be, because of being proud. And sometimes just uh, the main discovery that you don't have to be proud and you just can step down in the level of your comfort, but still be supported. So, um, you know, Simple living is very important, I think, for, 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 uh, for that kind of work. You, because you start being a public figure and a channeler, you might uh, consider that you don't, you have to, you might need to limit your luxuries. Not necessarily, some people are channelers and live a pretty luxurious life, but some others would have to like live a life of, uh, not a hermit, but at least uh, a, a, a person which is like, um, 
uh, doesn't uh, yeah you 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 have to sometimes you drop a lot of a lot of um, how do you call it um, unnecessary unnecessary things. Um, any more comments questions? Can you talk a little bit about how to establish the connection chakra wise? Like I hear that there's a chakra in the back of the neck. I don't know much about actually. Yeah, um, as a huge thing, I wanted to skip a lot of those, of those technical things, but I say for every person it is different. And some people, um, uh, some people, it, it's, it's amazing now they like, in the past, it would be like very spiritual people would would be um, not even in the, in any times. Like sometimes a person is a channeler and they are of low spiritual vibration, and some people is a channeler, a very high spiritual vibration. So, you know, it can come from the from God. It could be like top of the head from God. It can come from the earth. It could be like root chakra channeling. Um, people who work uh, with Reiki, it could be the answers. For, for me, they all often come from, from through hands. So to get the answer, I would work with my hands and feel with my hands, feel the answer. So that's for me, it's just taken through the hand to the heart. And my, so my, my, uh, my channel, I would say, largely comes through the heart. I kind of synchronize my head vibration with the heart vibration and actually with the stomach. It's like three things, stomach, yeah, my stomach channel. I channel with my stomach. That's a huge thing for me. Stomach is a big part. Um, so back of the head, it's not my strong part. Jim said, mentioned something about his points, but he also uh, has some sort of spiritual implant. So they upgraded him as, as he started, but he was already pretty much connected. So it was just an upgrade so he can do it like full time and he he can easily switch from uh, one person to another, like recently we had interview, like we had a round, round table, I had a round table, we had a question, which I wanted to ask like several people in a row. So he would, I would switch channeled beings like every say four minutes. That was just highest number of beings in, in, in one channel and uh, channeled. And for me, like when I did it for myself, it was, um, a huge toll on my health and after that I was sick. So I would recommend against switching in one session, many beings. I mean, if they have to come, that's fine. If it is angelics and um, higher spiritual beings, that's fine. But, you know, switching from uh, physical, be between physical beings of different races, I would recommend against that. It's, it's, um, it's, it's tough. So, um, yeah, whatever works for you. It, it, physically, how it comes, it's it's very different for everybody. Like for some people, it comes through throat chakra. For some people, it comes through uh, third eye, through e, through uh, listening, through hearing. And uh, for me, it's more like the stomach work. Uh, now, how do you practice? Um, for the practice, I would recommend practicing in a small group and practicing one-on-one -on -one or like three people together. And uh, we'll do like one person practice soon, like in a few minutes. And um, it's, it's very simple. You sort of do a group meditation that helps, but not necessarily. You can just start like, like just practice. So a person goes, mim mimics Bashar or Jim just going into the state. And... Uh, it is important to have really quiet, really protected, closed environment so you can kind of lock the meeting. I can push the button on Zoom and prevent more people from coming. Lock the meeting and everybody is very quiet and supportive. Um, and then it really helps to have a question. When you have an invitation to a certain uh, entity and a question, it really helps. Also inviting uh, sort of protective entities is also a good idea. Like Jim always has uh, a protective alien who would uh, work as a secretary and um, receptionist. And he would make sure that no negative beings are coming through. Like we had, a, at some point we had a, a negative uh, sort of genie 
uh, Persian kind of genie uh, possessing Jim, and it was a very unpleasant. Oh no, actually, that was a different case. There were some aliens who entered into Jim and tried to pull out some information from his head, and that was very physically unpleasant. And uh, after that, uh, our alien friends introduced a secretary who would uh, receptionist who would. Um, uh, control uh, and uh, take take uh, do initial screen or scan of people of beings and entities that, that enter gym. So he has the help from other side. So that's a good idea. So you might invite your favorite protector to 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 help you with the receptionist work. Max, can I cut in for yes. one sec? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Can you go into a little bit more detail on that? Like, what can a being do if they I guess possession is channeling without permission, or yeah, uh huh, oh yeah. the The case was uh, the case with the genie was, yeah, it happens once in a while. So um, as in the, in the, it was early in in the case um, that um, the early now history. So Jim was we were just beginning, and Jim was on the Reiki table, and I was um, waiting for someone to come, and we invited something positive, but I don't know what happened, but a genie came through and he just came in and started cursing in some ancient language, which sounded Eastern, I don't know, Eastern. And I, I asked him uh, what, what you know, to switch to English or to Russian because I couldn't understand his, uh, his language and he refused. And uh, after a while, he finally, uh, uh, oh, I didn't know what to do, right? I didn't know what to do. And that's a, a big thing, like the, the caretaker has to, you know, is in charge because Jim is not there. So I, have, I was in charge, I had to do something. And for me, uh, one of the tools I use Reiki and another tool is speaking. And also I had a, a musical instrument, a metal drum, and I started playing mu pretty music to calm down that spirit. And he started listening. And after listening, Jim started coughing and, uh, and came back. And Jim said that it was uh, a genie who was imprisoned on earth. And he was imprisoned for thousands of years and he was very angry. And uh, that after I started playing music, he remembered something which he forgot, something positive, something pleasant. And he was pleased very much. And he said Jim to cough him out. So Jim coughed and coughed him out. Uh, so this coughing out actually is a good healing technique, which I learned right from that experience. And also that you're in charge and you have to do something. And I was doing something positive. I was actually playing positive music delivered in my positive attitude and positive healing to the being. So that helped. And another case, it was weirder. Um, uh, it was, again, Jim just started laughing uncontrollably. I mean, that's one of the scariest things. Like he was uh, on the table and then started laughing. And after a little while, he started uh, saying, stop, stop. And he was like hurting and he was like turning on the table. That was crazy. And here, I don't know what I did, but I just was um, authoritative and I said, you're not authorized to do that. You have to go, please return Jim back. So something of that sort. And I was keeping saying that because like you're in charge, your invitation and your uh, free will is res respected. So they come because there is some loophole in your, in your, um, in your invitation, they kind of come on open invitation. So when you invite, you might want to invite more specific entities without open invitation. Not like anyone who wants to come in, please come in my body. You want a little more specific invitation. So this time, uh, somebody came uh, later, Takur or Pentium, and said that it was some attack by some negative guys who wanted to pull out some negative information, some inf important uh, intelligence information for their military purposes from Jim and they tried to dig through Jim's memory and while they were digging they were like giving some uh, screen uh, emotions to him so he would be distracted. 
So that's why he was laughing or, or, or uh, being hurt. But there are like, other than just commanding that, them to leave, I have nothing to do, I, I could no tool, it was uh, Max, you're starting to break up. Uh, the tool. Sorry. You're starting to break up. Yeah, somebody called and uh, I, I need to block the call. I don't know how to do it. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm back. So, um, yeah, so you say, I'm in charge. I'm here writing the session. You are not invited. Please leave right away. We invite... Uh, and invite someone, someone strong, like Tucker or uh, Jesus or Archangel Michael. My, angels are very good in that. They usually are, uh, if, if nobody has uh, authority, authorization, uh, angels do have. They're like administrators with all the passwords, all the keys. So inviting uh, Archangels is a great idea. So I invite Archangel, Archangel Michael and he'll take charge. If Michael doesn't have, invite Grindel. Grindel has his own ways of dealing with, ne with negative entities. <laughs> I'm scared, scaring you, right? It's supposed to be a positive part. No, this Mas is the best information because with this, we can actually help ourselves if we get in trouble. Sure, yep. Ma Mas, I, I wanted to ask you because when you were uh, transmitting uh, this lie language, I felt that uh, you open a channel in the back. And uh, so is this fully open or do we need to do some other things? Um, I don't intentionally do, I don't know what I do when I do open the chat. Are you talking about the initiations which I do in, um, in workshops or what? No, no, no. You, uh, I don't know. Like uh, 15 minutes ago, when you start singing, uh, uh -huh. it was it was uh, an opening channel from the back, upper uh, upper back, and uh, then uh, the crown as well. So you, you had opened something already. <laughs> um, okay, so that's not me doing. I was doing my part, and the spirits were doing your their part. So. We are being guided and worked by the spirits, and you know we are being surrounded by a lot of helpers. That's their job to do this. I was just doing my intuitive ch uh, uh, chanting, and I was not aware of any of that. When I do Reiki, I am aware of uh, opening channels a little bit, but but right now I was just doing my part without being aware of that. Okay. But. Uh, Whatever is open, make sure you close it when you don't use it. <laughs> so basically take charge and say, now I want it open, now I want it closed. And when you go to the uh, mainstream uh, environment, just <laughs> um, before you go to the mainstream, uh, make sure to uh, re readjust your channels to be uh, suitably uh, protected for the mainstream. Activate whatever is needed. like. When you go to Walmart, you know, uh, work on yourself before like entering the Walmart. You have to like turn on some protection, turn off some 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 things. Any more things? Oh. Yeah, the the cha the crisis. So if there is a health crisis, take it easy. What I do, I uh, I basically transform myself away from the crisis. So whatever is sick. I just leave that state to a new state. So I'm moving fast forward. It's like surfing on a wave. You surf on the wave of positivity. So if there is somebody, like if you are sick, you move yourself from that sickness to the, your future self, tomorrow self, as fast as possible. So don't um, uh, amplify that sickness. Don't live in it. So I, uh, I just transform my... I'm very different than I was many years ago, like four years ago, two years. I forget stuff, I drop stuff. I actively work on forgetting things and on dropping things and changing myself to my future self. So, so that happens to me and to Jim. So I got my uh, new higher self, which is 
a surprising thing for for my for me. But actually, you can have your higher self sort of upgraded and replaced. Previously, I had uh, an alien higher self. Now it is. Uh, um, now it is Yogananda is my higher self, right? So he came up, volunteered, and it was a nice, pretty introduction. So he he didn't come first; he was introduced by others first, and then I had to guess who it is, and they said that my guess is correct, and then he stepped in, and uh, I I feel it. I feel that Yogananda's mission, I guess, one the, his biggest mission was to uh, to combine the the east and the west to combine yoga and western science and uh, i'm coming from russia so i'm coming from the east as well and uh, to the west <laughs> as far west as you can come and also that that's my mission to combine the russian science and uh, american science and to western science combine uh, russian spirituality with western spirituality so so there is a lot of similarities which I, I can embrace. And for Jim, it was uh, uh, a change from his, um, I think his higher self was, I forget, maybe uh, maybe Seth or no, somebody like, like Seth, maybe, it sounded like Seth, some of the ancient ones. And now it is, uh, I think I'm, I'm I'm blocked because I'm not supposed to pronounce it. I can say mine, but I cannot say, yeah, I'm not supposed to say somebody else's car. So you have to ask Jim. Yep. <laughs> I'm just blocked, which is funny. Anyway. Um, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. I have a question about the genie. Would it have been possible while he was there to sort of like heal him, ask him questions, to let go of that anger and bring him through the light while he was there? Absolutely, yes. I was trying everything. He was proactively cursing, so that was blocking that. But usually you try all of this. Yes, it's a great thing to do. Yes. And sometimes it is, uh, uh, how do you call it, um, discarnate souls who didn't cross over. Basically, the the uh, spirits that of, died, of people who died and who it's not the whole spirit, it's like a fragment of a spirit which is stuck here, so lost souls, you help them to cross over, and sometimes they're pretty confused, aggressive, and negative, so you help them. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you something else. What uh -huh. about if we, um, if we hire the vibration, because I use crystals, and so with uh -huh. the crystals, even uh -huh. if I'm sick or oh, my vibration is lower, so I can get it up. So if I do that, it might help to entity to live or what's your experience about? Yes, absolutely. So rising the vibration is the main tool, like lightening th things up, making them, them lighter. And rising the vibration is the main tool of healing and main tool of transformation, main tool of channeling, that's all we do. Crystals are cool and I love crystals. I usually work with whatever materials are around, not necessarily pure crystals, whatever stone is around or other material objects, I, I incorporate them. So it doesn't have to be like super expensive crystal. It can be something which you find on, 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 the, on the ground. But yes, you work with, the, with those energies. And some people are really strongly attached to the crystals. My, my attachment is to water and to air and to the fire. And the material, the, the, the earth is, would be, I would say, I, I connect to earth through food and uh, plants, but not necessarily through stones. But it, it is the same, the same part of, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm really connected to the water. I do a lot of water work. I do it on the ocean and whatever water is around, I'm, I'm connected to it first of all. But yes, all, 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 of, all of the four elements are important. Yes, I, I do candles. I do burning incense. Um, and, uh, and I'm really taking care of the fresh air. So 
like for me, air is like a huge importance and breathing and air uh, is, is also a good tool for varizing vibration. So, so it's, a, it's a combination of tools, yes, but crystals, yes. Um, and you can charge them. Yeah, enchanting is another thing, another tool. Like I, whenever I have uh, free time, I would chant, charge, create a chant, create a chant, like improvise a chant. Very simple, simple, like la 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 la, something like that. And uh, I would charge it with the energy, with my work. I would charge it. So whenever I need the energy, I would take this chant, bring it in, and it would be already charged. So I would use something like a battery, like a chargeable battery. I would bring the chant, which I charged before, and I would use it. Um. I bought the um, Shanghai uh -huh. and I also bought the uh, Shanghai uh, necklace to uh, put on me at night when I go to sleep. You know what the Shanghai does? Yeah, I heard about it. I think I, I use it a little bit, oh, but not, uh, not, uh, not aware right now. Yeah. Oh, it's very powerful. The, the I think it's green, right? It's like greenish. No, it's black. Oh, then I'm confused. Okay. okay. It's like a silver coal, essentially. All right, got it. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's a protective stone. Uh -huh. uh, I when I first uh, when I first put the uh, sphere by the window, it took two hours that it finally got activated, and my whole body was just vibrating. And at night, uh, this morning, I felt an entity try to enter me, and I felt it blow away. And I went, oh my God, it couldn't, it couldn't attend me because I had the stone on me. This is a really wonderful stone. I'm so glad. This is the best candy I have ever bought. <laughs> um, anyways, I just wanted to share the Shanghai. I heard about the uh, uh, QHHT uh, uh, before she hypnotizes them. And uh, so I went out the other day and I, I said, okay, I'm gonna go see if I can find this stone. And like I said, I'm really glad I bought it because uh, it's a very, very strong protective stone. Really, really helpful, okay. Wonderful. A uh, Couple more things I wanted to, to, to mention before we start. So uh, often uh, it, it's important that you are compatible with, uh, with the group. And very often the group grows and people uh, grow, grow in their, uh, and change. So it is very typical that the group splits. So don't, um, don't take it negatively, to make it, take it positively that, you know, if this group now forms and then somebody decides that they're not compatible, just create a new group. So that's a format which can be easily, uh, Carol, can you mute yourself? I just have a question first. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Um, it, it said uh, that if you are channeling an entity and it does not want to identify itself, then there are more chances that an entity is not a good entity. I, I would say, I would agree actually. Yeah, if they don't want to identify themselves, it's uh, suspicious. Sometimes yeah. they're like, there's a, I mean, there are exceptions. There are exceptions, like say we have a, a friend who works in a, in a program which is basically humans outside the earth. Uh, he is very, in a very high level rank official there and he is nice, but he has to deal with lots of negativity there. So he obviously doesn't want to, to explain who, who he is, but he is aware of uh, the things which are happen, happening like in the background by the you know, men in black and uh, secret military program. So he's somewhere there um, in, in the physical human body. And obviously he doesn't want to say his name and uh, he was surprised we know about him, but he, when, when, when he's needed and there is a reason, he would come and un anonymously uh, help us. So, so we, we respect that. And for me, it was a huge effort to, to really figure out who he was and um, and when they connected the dots, it was a wow moment. And, and things like that happen, like when officials would have to hide their identity. But I always ask them, you know, if you could provide for us some key code word, which would allow us you to call you later. So, you know, can you give yourself a number or, um, or a nickname? 
And usually they are fine with that. That's that's okay. I mean, I would say 20% of people who come through a gym are not don't want there. And some of them do it just for the reasons of uh, of selflessness, of being like representing uh, an idea, not to be talking about themselves. So it's also positive. So not necessarily it would be like a an evil spirit or an evil person. It could be just someone who is not authorized to present themselves or who doesn't want. Okay. Uh, so I wanted to say that it's okay to start a new group and take it easy. The format is pretty flexible um, and it's free, almost free. And uh, the more groups, the better. And you can do it under Hukul or you can do it separately from Hukul. We are welcoming. It's not that you have to be like reporting to a hierarchy. It's, it's more like a, a free a wild west where everybody is doing whatever they want. And uh, I think in, in any way you serve the spirit is, is wonderful. So it doesn't have to be one group. Feel free to, create, to be proactive and creating your own group. Also in this group, uh, make sure to connect to all individuals to write down their names. And um, the, we have this face group, Facebook group, which is Hukul uh, channel and practice group. Uh, connect to people one-on-one -on -one and say hi, just, you know, home assignment, say hi to everybody and ask a few questions just to understand who they are and possibly exchange some, uh, make friends and exchange some contact information and meet everybody and see who you resonate with because usually there is like one or two people who like really like resonate with you. Connect with them and create your own practice. It doesn't have to be a group practice. You don't need an excuse to, to practice. So, uh, and it doesn't have to be recorded, but if there is some message which came through interesting, that's like your duty to share it with the world. So, so there are many ways you can sometimes people don't want to put their face so or sometimes they don't want to put their voice so it can be a text message sometimes it's just a gist of it you can publish but I think publishing is important one way or another any more ideas questions the fear so there is a huge fear but I would say the fear of staying the same is more big is bigger than the fear of of moving forward so for me like the main uh, uh, force behind the progress is panic and desperation. So we are here because we are desperate. <laughs> and uh, we, we, we do that because that's the, 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 gives us the meaning of life. It's like being lost and finally finding the meaning, finding the service where you can exchange service with the world. And because you provide the service to the world, you are given a lot of support. Like maybe, maybe I was supposed to die several times previously, but because I found a way to make myself useful, I got an extension and I'm here with you now. How do you channel if you don't channel? Go ahead. How do you channel if you'd never channeled before? So. Uh, there are many ways I say doing conscious psychic work is much easier. So I would, if, if you want a, a gentle entrance, that would be just stand in your body and ask, getting the question, feeling, giving yourself time, giving yourself time to get in the proper state and get uh, the intuitive take on the question and sometimes I would have to ask a few more questions basically to fill the space around because sometimes the question is kind of leading you in why one way like a person asks about one thing but really what matters is something completely different and sometimes you have to give them the answer on the most important question which wasn't pronounced so you fill things around and sometimes ask a few questions and and then you um, you might give them the question which doesn't make sense to you, but which makes a lot of sense to them. Like an example of that was that for me, the centurion was an alpha centurion. But, but for that person, the centurion was uh, the centurion from the 
uh, New Testament from, from the history of Jesus that was like uh, Roman centurions. But anyway, there was a message about centurions which they, they needed to hear and I delivered it without, although our interpretation of the message was completely different. So for me, uh, I write poetry. So for me, it was, it was much easier to give messages in poetic form like um, ancient Pythias did it, like in Greece, there was like poetic women who drank some, uh, some uh, psychoactive drugs and then psychedelic drugs and then got into special space and they would give you poetry and this poetry would give you uh, the predictions and same thing Nostradamus did the predictions and poetry. So for me, psychic work in the form of poetry and actually art is easier. So when I give a message, I take a pencil and I draw the message and make basically a cartoon out of the message and then I describe the cartoon. So for, for me, working with hands is very easy and painting and writing poetry is uh, easy. So that's my way of they can getting into a state of psychic connection and then I can give a lot of messages through that. Another easy entrance is tarot cards. Um, if you don't have ones, uh, I would recommend go on Amazon and it's like for $12 you can buy Muha cards. It's spelled M-U-C-H-A, M-U-C-H-A cards, Muha tarot cards. And uh, they have a little description and start working with them. They are uh, they're very profound. And then we get in tarot, and it's it's a huge uh, channel of uh, psychic work, which is uh, helped by by symbols which are very basic, very fundamental. That you're working with uh, elementals and some other very fundamental symbols of the design of the of our reality. So it's it's an easy entrance, and it's very uh, easy work. And then you can go uh, into conscious channeling when you ask a question and you intuitively hear, it doesn't have to be a voice, if you intuitively hear what the spirits tell you. To me, they tell it through the answer. Basically, I get the answer inside myself, the answer comes from inside, I don't hear the voices. But I know the answer, and sometimes I question them, and they kind of t tackle the answer a little bit, and the answer becomes so clear, it's like hard to to spoil it anymore, anyway. So, and then sometimes the answer is so rough that I have to translate it to a person in a in an indirect way because I cannot just say directly like do that or because they wouldn't get it. I would have to say blah 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 blah. And sometimes it's just going from the opposite. I say the opposite. What would you think about that solution? And by considering the opposite, they would understand the answer basically. So. One important thing I have to talk about, interpretation of the channeling. So, so the channelings are weird, very weird, in a way that there is always an element of fakery there. It's always an element of being incorrect. Like once Jim stop channeled, say again? Can I, stop? Can I just stop you just a second? Do we have to have Mucha Taros? I've got Mother Peace Taros. Don't know oh, how to no, read no. Them, but I have them. Is that of good? course, no, no. I'd like just to you know if you don't have it, then I just said that's my favorite. But you no, know, they're they not magically charged. They're just on the light side. I like them because they're light. I mean, okay, they can be very dark. Okay. My, and I like the light ones. Muka is is a uh, well, mucha muka are them. very light. So. Muka muka are light. Okay. Anyway, um, okay. what I was talking about. <laughs> um. Interrupted me, I forgot the, the line of thought. Hi, Max. It's <laughs> yeah, Anya. You have been talking about weird channelings that sometimes they can Oh, thank you. French. Thank you, Anya. Welcome. Thank you. Uh huh. So weird. Uh, in a way that Jim was channeling in the start of the webinar, and uh, it was, I think, the cur, and uh, someone uh, was a female asking a question about herself. But the name wasn't wasn't uh, saying that it was a female, and the question was read by me. So Takura assumed that it was a male, and uh, and and he was she, she was giving her advice if she, if she was uh, that if the girl was a male, and the girl was so upset that you know what kind of channeling is that if it was a you know if they couldn't even tell the the gender of the person, so she left and never came back, and. 
you know, the, the things like that happen often. Like sometimes they give you a message which makes like little sense or no sense whatsoever. And uh, I take it easy. I think uh, uh, it is, uh, there are many explanations why it happens, but the main explanation that it is an illusion. We live in an illusionary reality and when we do the channeling, it's uh, the matrix protects itself. So this illusion has to protect itself. If it was not protecting itself, it's very smart. <coughs> and if it doesn't protect itself, it would fall apart. So it has to protect itself. Like if you watch the movie Matrix, there is a lot of uh, kind of uh, illustrations how the system protects itself from falling apart. Especially it protects itself from the hackers like Neo who tries to hack it. So. Channeling is a typical way of, of hacking the matrix and the, there are forces which we work against which uh, don't allow too much of miracles to happen. So miracles happen only when they are justified. So if, uh, if there is a spiritual work which needs to be done, if there is something which needs to be fixed in the, in the divine plan and if somebody needs a spe special message for their spiritual growth, or if somebody's health or, or life is in danger, then the messages are allowed. And if it is just a casual uh, curiosity, then uh, the, the, there is no justification for the miracles and the messages become basically random. So that's one of the main principles. And uh, for me, it was pretty tough, especially with the aliens. I was very disappointed about the fact that they refuse to cooperate in terms of like, they have all those technologies and they refuse to come down. Even to me in person, they wouldn't, sh they never showed up. I mean, why don't they show up right here, right? They, they don't. It's so easy for them, but they don't, right? You know, we ask them, they're friendly, but you know, we ask them like, please, a little proof that you're real and you know, it, it just happens very rarely and only on special occasions. Uh, one of the illustrations of that was that, you know, we go to the C5, close encounter five campings, like Star Wars campings at night. So we do the meditation and we sit and watch for hours, like looking at the sky, hoping that they will show up. So the best result I got was when we meditated and, um, uh, we uh, poked the, the sky with the laser pointer and they started responding. So they would blink a star and uh, they bl uh, we counted, I counted how many times we together as a group saw the star blinking in, in the area of the space. And it was pretty clear, like boom, very bright. And three or four people would say, I, did you hear it? Did you see that? Did you see that? So it was like, and the point to the sky in the proper place. So the aliens or whoever it was were blinking this just one one blink a blink and then different place blink like like a ship would going around and just you know i was making a joke that they would have their laser pointer and they would laser pointer pointed it to us for through the through the window anyway um so i felt pretty sick at that moment it was just too much for me, the reality was shifting so much that I felt like my body was kind of in pain and I felt sick in many places and uh, I hated that feeling, but it looks like together as a group, we transformed the reality in a way that it allowed the connection between our material reality and their alien reality in a way that stars started to blink. So it, to me, it was uh, that as a group collectively, we can, uh, we can change the, the reality. And I think the same thing happens with channeling. When Jim and I come together, uh, it's not only Jim creates, and not, not only Jim connects to the aliens. I think uh, it is me and him uh, together create, create the channeling because lots of times what comes in his, uh, channeling out is something that is picked from my brain. It's just crazy, but that's, you know, we create a connection 
And something that Jim has no way of knowing comes from my experience, like which happened like a few hours before, and comes in the channel in, in, a, in a different way, but uh, it's very recognizable. And uh, as you can see, when Jim and I channel, when Jim channels for me, it's very different than Jim channels for others. There is some information that comes specifically because I'm present and because Jim and I co-created that, that miracle. So the role of questioner, interviewer, caretaker is also very important. Also, like I, I recommend against many people channeling at once. We tried that several times on our webinars and I think it's just the energy becomes confused. I think it's very important to have one channeler and other people asking questions as we usually do. And, uh, and when uh, people start uh, uh, interrupting and starting to teach instead of asking questions, the energy just doesn't flow right. Like say we have Jesus and then somebody else comes and say, and I am uh, uh, Muhammad and I'm also teaching something. And, and uh, Jesus and Muhammad would start teaching in a row and it's just a, a mixed energy. I mean, it's like a round table, but, but not well organized. I would say it's much better when, and the second problem with that is that when you are a channeler and you're in a channeling state, you you spend a lot of energy to support this high vibration. It is a uh, hard work to channel. You physically tune yourself up and put a lot of physical chemical energy into support of the working resonance in your body. And if at that time nobody listens to you, it's kind of burning out your, you're spinning your motor, but you're burned out because you cannot speak. So it's much better when you do that and there is somebody listening and, and you have an opportunity to answer because if question is asked but you cannot say, that's, that's not a pleasant um, effect, I think. Max, uh -huh. can you talk a little bit about what James is like after the chain link session? Because we oh, never- he, Yeah, he's, a, he's very special in a way that he's very high level being uh, I don't think he was a high level being. I think he was positive and connected, but he was upgraded recently. I think he was kind of connected to a new higher self and connected to new energies. And this way he kind of, a higher, uh, higher being came into him uh, lately. And that changes a lot. His, uh, his energy is very different. And he's actually more aloof. In the past, he was more vulnerable and more connected to people. And now he's often just blah, disconnected. Like he's like in his own, he's not present in his body, basically. But, uh, but he's, he, he's here for a reason and he just does his job. So he became a little drier and a little more uh, forceful. He became much more braver. Like in the past, he was how do you say, uh, a coward, yeah, much more a coward, he would uh, stay away from painful topics. Now he can face them, no problem. I was criticizing him that, you know, in the past, if there is a problem in the, co in the, in the community, I would have had to, had to deal with it, with it. Now he has no problem like uh, being, being authoritative and just dealing with people, no problem. Although he is very positive and very, very, um, how do you say, um, he doesn't worry much about things. Whatever happens, he has a positive answer. He has this ability to transform whatever negative happens to a positivity. One of the ways he's uh, doing it is through his karma. He's connected to some sort of a very strong karma so he can sparingly spare his, uh, his positive karma on others. So if a person says, comes to him and says, you know, my uh, little golden fish is dying, it's not a big deal for Jim to say, okay, go home and it will be fine. But basically he would spend some of his karma to, to give this fish a new life. And that's, uh, you know, Yogananda did that and some other big teachers could do that because they have accumulated a lot of positive karma in their life. And because they do such a big work that they have a big budget of karma which they can spend on others. So, if you do that, and if you do so, give some of your life to random things, you would then be hurt. And Jim, uh, Jim isn't. So she has uh, lots more of this uh, positive uh, budget which she can spend on others. 
But in principle, when you do your psychic work and your healing work and your channeling, it's not that you do the work. It is you're just a channel, a vessel, a tube, a pipe, a pump, and you just pump the questions up and pump the answers down. You just like do your uh, pumping work and you don't really take take any decisions. So in channeling, it's 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 you step away and there is some higher energy that, that does it for you. So you don't spend your karma on uh, informative thing of the channel and you spend your karma only on keeping the pump in a good shape. So as a channel, you're just uh, an advanced uh, uh, smartphone, basically. People talk, talk through you, but you're just a smartphone, which, which job is to charge the batteries and then use that energy for, for supporting the conversation. What about uh, physiologically? How does gym... Oh yeah, right. I didn't answer your question. I answered all other questions, but not your question. So, Jim is. Uh, I'm exhausted after channeling. Like after, like I, I, uh, so there is an effect of channeling that for me goes not only uh, forward. Like after the channeling, I'm exhausted. I'm I'm also exhausted like a day before. So if I if I channel tomorrow, I feel like sick the day before. It's just uh, typical for me. It is basically when I channel, I pull the energy, not only from uh, from later hours, but I pull the energy from yesterday. It's like there is a time time transference, time time transparency. So, so that just happens. Anyway, if I do the public channel, for private, it's a little easier, but for public, which just goes on record, it's, it's harder. Anyway, um, for Jim, uh, he has little problem channeling for a long time. He comes out in seconds and uh, he's a little bit absent-minded, but other than that, he's, I'm very hungry after channel and he's fine. He can channel like the whole day, like he would, he, he's tip, some, some days often he has like four channelings, four sessions in a row. And uh, other, other things he does Reiki. So for him it's like, he works like he's a, a workhorse. He works like every day. It's a huge thing for him. Like he's, he's working hard. Like well, there is almost no no breaks in his work, and uh, I also work hard, but not on channeling. Like for me, it's more like other things than science work. But uh, in science work, I do a lot of psychic, uh, intuitive things. But uh, it's a little different quality. It's not connected to people. It's more connected to molecules and stuff. So uh, so Jim does it. Uh, he has a cycle. Like uh, I was listening to a book, Leading with the Heart. It's called Leading with the Heart. It's a quite good book. It's about um, a football uh, coach who was winning some sort of tournaments like uh, like 20 years in a row, something like that. So he had a, uh, for him it was not a, a single time event. It was just a cycle which repeated from year to year. He would like take any football players and convert the team into a winning team and, and win it. And obviously you cannot feed it all with your energy. You have to like use their energy, but structure it in a way that it is uh, working. And when you get, once you get the, the method, like the repetitive method, then you use it over and over. So Jim, it, for Jim, it was very easy to establish the routine and now it is a routine for him. And same thing, like I have a wonderful Reiki healer who is like working hard as a workhorse, like all every day, many hours doing uh, Reiki and acupuncture. And it just becomes a routine. You kind of get used to that and adjust it here and there. Make sure the money flows properly. Make sure the support network is good. Make sure your family is good. Make sure the uh, your love love life is in in good shape your learning is a good shape and still there is even for Jim there is like challenges and lessons he, I mean even if you become like a a guru and a, a teacher and a very respected uh, a light worker you still have challenges of your own they could be on higher level but still a challenge and uh, I mean uh, Jim and I we still have lots of health crises like I do health crisis almost very frequently and he, he also like once in a while he would go through a crisis almost like near near death crisis but then i miraculously would recover and come back to work i have a question uh-huh how do you close the channeling yeah 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 um 
for me, it's very important to close the channeling. And sometimes when you kind of do it like routinely, it's, uh, it's, it's very easy. It becomes automatic. Like Reiki and channeling, just close, you come back to your normal way. But initially, you can make a whole routine and, and a ritual around closing the process and thank the, the entities. And when you finish that, like I, I usually run on the, on the high energy for like another half, half an hour. And it's just, I assume that's like I'm, that I'm healthy and that I have the energy forever. But after half an hour, I just run off gas and just drop like nearly dead where, wherever I am. So I, I'm kind of used to that. It's just normal. I get used to that. So they give you, they adjust whatever they're like your chemistry and spiritual energy in a way that you get in charge. But after that, you need the time to recover. So you give yourself time to recover. When you do your scheduling and the planning, assume that when you finish channeling, you you have you need time to recover. And for me, recovering could be like work, working with water, meditation, washing dishes, physical repetitive work. So you can kind of pump, adjust your pumps and like readjust back to normal. Yeah. One thing like I, I like we teach Jim and I teach grounding and uh, there is a big mistake that you know some people assume that grounding is high level meditation and I mean I guess there are different ways of grounding but you know uh, we teach like there is a we have a friend who is like we say now get grounded and he goes into a highly meditative state no med grounding is actually coming back into physicality and awakening here in this physical state and connecting to people around you and connecting to your body here and connecting to uh, the physical space around you. So basically, it's like playing volleyball. I mean, you can't play volleyball unless you know where the ball is and, and unless you know where people are around. So, so uh, you come back to the physicality, kind of focus on your physical chakras, focus on your physical parts and eat food. Like for me, uh, I hear is a story. Like uh, Ram Das ran a workshop, and some gentleman was uh, meditated too too eagerly and became completely crazy. So he started crashing the furniture and being physically active. And uh, so they prescribed for him uh, a regimen of eating hamburgers and running around the field on uh, or around the football fields. And somebody would be always with him, just kind of feeding him hamburgers and uh, running with him. So he would be uh, under control. And after some hours of, uh, of heavy physical work and eating hamburgers, he kind of came back to normal. So yeah, that is like, yeah, junk food is the best way to like lower your vibration. So <laughs> go to McDonald's, eat McDonald's food and you'll be fine. You will get poisoned, but you kind of can't ground back to normal vibration, like sickness, or normal uh, material sickness. It's, 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 it's almost impossible to remain in a... <laughs> okay, I, I take it back. It's possible to remain in high vibration, but it's very rare. So Jim combines very grounded life, lifestyle. He would eat like normal American food, which is for me like poison. He would eat like pasta and oily food and fries and ketchup and stuff of that sort and burgers and cheese and Coke and sweets. And with his diabetes, it makes no sense. But um, I mean, it's just a miracle how he survives. It's just, they told him that, you know, he's, uh, he's in a special situation where he can afford uh, eat a normal diet, like normal American mainstream diet and still be a channeler. For me, it's like uh, it's like completely suicidal, but but yeah. it doesn't. It works fine with him. Yep. How about just working on a breathing or a, bre a breathing exercise or a breathing in the chakras or uh, there's got to be better ways to kind of like ground ourselves than to go and eat that bad food and and, and disturb all the chemistry in the body like that. Oh, I, I don't. I didn't think you take me seriously. I thought I was making a joke. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's extreme. Of course, no. Of course not. No, but I do eat. I do eat. Uh, for me, food is grounding. I do eat. Uh, so, um, yeah, breathing, of course. No, no, no. I don't. I don't want you to overdo the grounding. <laughs> 
There is lots of healthy ways of doing the ground, like washing dishes and cleaning with some repetitive motion is perfect. And nature walks are great. So yeah, playing with kids is also wonderful. I, I discovered horses recently, so I'm into horses. Like horses are amazing. You clean the poop and you feel like uh, very elevated with that. Uh, manure, it's called manure, yeah. Clean the manure. I think I'm done with all my introduction. Can we talk about one last thing, uh, Max? Oh, sure. Um, now, Pamela Arlen, she channels some Elohim and other divine beings. And I find during her channelings, if she doesn't have both of her feet on the ground, she, she has electromagnetic interference. Does Jim have that ever? Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a big topic, but... Uh, yeah, whatever works. It's like for some people, it's impossible to combine the recording recording equipment with uh, with the channel. It, it, when they channel, all the recording equipment fails. So you have to find the equipment which is reliable enough to 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 record you. Sometimes it's just like uh, the simpler it is, the better. Sometimes like a, an old tape recorder would work better than any modern equipment. Uh, I'm very good with equipment, and only really when I get only rarely where I get in a special crazy state, uh, the equipment fails. I had it recently when like all things like broke around me. But uh, normally I just know what, what, what state I should be in, in uh, to, to, to keep the equipment working. So for me, it's like equipment and I make a united system. So, so I'm very good with that. I, I know how to get into that state. So not necessarily with the feet, but uh, it's more like movement shape of the of the aura to include the equipment and make it working. But yeah, I'm playing with the equipment all the time. And I just like I change the models until I find something that is like, really reliable. And this one is perfect. Like now I'm in the perfect state. When I walk, I don't overheat. I, um, I, I know for me, channeling is, if I do channeling and I talk, and I stand still and I sit still, it's like, for me, it's like suicidal. But when I walk, walk, it's, it's much easier to think. So nowadays I'm all, all like, I found my ideal, ideal um, speaking uh, form shape. And with, with that shape, I can uh, co-create that reality much better. What was the question? Oh, the feet, yeah. Uh-huh, I answered that. All right, so um, go ahead. Yep. My name is Max Shankai comes from Germany. Say again. Shankai comes from Germany. Yay. Yay. It actually comes from a place called Karelia in Russia. That's oh. where it all comes from. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ah, really? Yeah, yeah I was, the, I was, uh, yeah. Sorry, thank you, David. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No problem. Uh huh. I'm connected to this. Um, to the blue green color stones they make me really happy i'm and the blue green blue teal teal color and why 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 work with these stones is like my 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 energy is really happy like water ocean color is great all right so how do we do the practice uh anya do you want to say anything before we do the practice so go ahead give me your um what do you think? Um, I, I, uh, so you, you're being recorded. Do you want to talk about yourself a little bit? Hi, everybody. <clears throat> Just want to say hi. I don't know if you can see me or not. Yes, you're good. We can see you. So I just want to say hi to everybody and welcome. And thank you, Max, very much for coming and, um, and doing this for us, I appreciate it. My pleasure, I was guided. I wasn't planning, but they told me to come. That's great, thank you. Uh, first of all, I thought we were gonna do it at one o'clock, so I'm sorry, I didn't know. Uh, we're gonna, we changed this to 10 o'clock. And I was a little bit un unprepared, but I would like to meet with everybody, first of all, and talk to each other and um, see where you guys coming from. What do you feel about channeling? Why did you pick? Um, that you want to do channeling? Are you interested or you just want to come and see how everybody else might do that channeling or not? 
And um, like Max said, um, you know, it's different for everybody. I think that maybe writing first, if you feel when you meditate, when you come down, and I think it's very important um, what Max said, that it's um, nothing's affecting you. You cannot be angry, upset. If you have trouble at work or with family or something, try not to do channeling at that time. When you are in a peaceful state of mind, relaxed, um, if you want to ask questions, um, I think that best thing maybe start would be with your higher self, with angels, with someone very positive. And do not try to channel aliens right away or spirits right away. I think that will be inviting some negative ones that you don't want them. First, try to talk to your guides and have a piece of paper, start writing and see the answers that come to you. The more you do it, I have been practicing that and actually that helps me a lot because there are some things you kind of get into this zone, you start having answers that you never even thought about. And this is a good practice. Um, I, you know, I know Max was saying about um, grounding and eating junk food. And of course, um, I'm sure he was joking, but to me, like for example, right now, I am on a very strict diet. I do not eat any pasta, even potatoes, even I don't eat bread, anything that it's man-made, which is a challenging for first couple of days, but then eventually your body changes. Your body really adapts to it. And I'm trying to eat organic and actually I'm starting to eat less and less. Maybe I have one meal a day. I'm not saying you guys should do it, but it changes my thought process, chemical reaction in your body. It's purifying your body. So I think all of that stuff kind of helps to clean you from inside out. You know, start working on yourself first. We can talk about it later. And of course, um, Max is at more advanced in gym. I'm not, um, I'm starting everything, but um, I would not do public channelings. I would just do it for myself for now. And it's more steady. And uh, what we can do, we can meet like once a week, if that's okay with everybody, and just talk about your, your things, what you think. And if you want, if you feel like you want a channel, I agree with Max, one person at a time will be great. We can learn from each other. Let's put it this way, we kind of study each other and see. And we can pay more attention to whoever is channeling at that moment, if there's any negative entity because sometimes even if you can channel somebody positive we have to always understand that there are some spirits who crossed over but they are not on the other side yet they are still stuck in here for any reason and they can see opportunity that you open up and they can just come in even to say message to someone or just come and you know if they know you are the one who's starting channeling or you can contact with them, you hear them and they can talk to you, they will try to come more often. And you don't want that. So you always have to let everybody know and have always, like I do protection with Archangel Michael, even right now before I came here and talked to everybody, I always have protection. Um, and I think angels are very powerful beings and they will definitely be there for you and help you. Uh, we can meet once a week, we can take step by step, and you guys can give me your uh, feedback. You can tell me what do you feel. I can do sometimes meditation with you, but you know, uh, we don't want to spend whole half an hour just meditating. You can do it at home, and there are many other um, great meditations on YouTube. If you cannot focus by yourself, if you cannot concentrate, sometimes you can have a million different thoughts popping in your head. You can do meditation at home. So um, on that note, I don't want to talk too much. I'm going to give it back to Max. And Max, you can give me your feedback. What do you feel or any one of you? Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, we, we, did, we did already introductions. And thank you, Anya. I think what you said makes a lot of sense. And thank you for taking uh, initiative, making initiative. Um, I wanted just to, to do like one person practice and then I would leave and you can do whatever you like 
want to do like um, uh, maybe more 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 of practice whatever you like um, and before before that one person we possibly would do some some meditation and what I wanted also to to add that um, yeah I, I started like on a uh, how do you say neurotically quick note and I'm sorry for that maybe I drink too much coffee but I'm just trying to jam a lot of information which is actually should be like presented maybe in a slow slow fashion but but like normally in the past, we had a much more relaxed practices like blah, blah, and people would chat and laugh. So that's what, what, what the tone which I created, I think was, was uh, incorrect. It would be like much more relaxed and friendly and gentle and slow tone. So in the past, in our practices, which were run by Sabrina, it was much more like, much more relaxed and it was offline, it was off record. But I'm now on record because I just want to publish that part. And also I wanted to just to comment that most of the people who are present here are actually pretty advanced. So they are not the be not beginners at all. They came here because they love channeling and they already do it. Okay, uh, any more comments before we, before we move forward? I just want to say, guys, don't be shy. Go ahead and speak up. We are already open, and that's why we are here. So go ahead and ask any questions you have. There is no wrong question. Okay, I've got a question. Um, he just said that there are people here who know how to channel. I don't know anything about it. That's why I am here. So I don't know what you meant by that statement, but I want to start from the beginning, and I don't really know what questions to ask. Fair enough. Max, are you there? I'm sorry, I wasn't. Uh... Oh, I'm, I'm on mute. Sorry, I was speaking like on my mute micro. So thank you. And uh, some of them, um, yeah, the ones who introduced themselves were pretty advanced. And thank you for pointing out that not everyone is advanced. Uh huh. So for the beginners, uh, I would recommend like what, what I did in my workshop. And it's kind of works that you don't try to channel anyone other than yourself. So you get in your meditative higher state and invite the higher shape of you, higher form of you, higher representation of you, like the spiritually advanced part of you to speak. So you speak for yourself. And this way you sort of do the channeling of yourself, and that's kind of natural for us. Just the higher form of you. So you don't have to leave your body, you don't have to invite anyone else, you speak for yourself, but, but in, a higher, uh, in a higher spiritual mood. And that works great for me, and that's basically what I do often. And I warn, like, there is no trickery here, I just warn people that's what, what I do. And, you know, they take from that whatever they like. But then uh, if I invite someone else, I know that they come for the vibration and uh, sometimes they speak something. The information that comes is not typically mine. Sometimes it goes against what I would say. So that's a good indication for me that I'm, I'm really channeling something external. But, but on my uh, experience, I think that's a more important point. Uh, like we all one, we all united. And when Jim channels other beings, it's not that they come, actually, the other beings come to him. It's uh, he and them share part of the identity. So it's co-creation of them and Jim's consciousness co-create something, something together. Because even when Takur speaks or some other beings speak, I recognize that it is part of Jim speaking. It is uh, something that is co-created by Jim's personality and their personality. So... It's all uh, kind of on that level, it all merges together. So it's kind of, we, sh we reach some level of the consciousness where we all want. It's closer to God. And that's where there's no distinction between uh, different beings. And that's why it's possible. So there is nothing wrong with uh, uh, different personalities bleeding into each other. I, I think it's, it's okay, it's, it's, it's permitted. Can I ask uh, something about yep. trans channeling? Yes. Uh huh. So I was meditating before, right before this session, and um, I was lying in my bed. Then I lost like feeling of my arms and my legs, so I know I was getting. And then it got black, and then I woke up maybe forty minutes later, 
and my arm had lifted up and just fell onto my chest and then I woke up and then I came here. So is that trans channeling? Like, how do you know if you're trans channeling sleeping or if, yeah. And how do you know, how do you go from conscious channeling to trans channeling? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, so the two, two different questions. First about uh, you not being able to control your body. That's normal. And I always welcome that. Uh, and uh, like when I do my meditations, I always leave my body. And when I come back, I give myself time. It's just my, my, my free will is respected. So when I want to come back to my body, I finally get there. But I usually give myself like minutes, minutes and tens of minutes to actually come back and I don't rush it. So if you feel like somebody else is controlling your body and you cannot control your body, don't be worried. It's, you know, that's expected. You just give your intention and you will be back. No problem. There, uh, there are lots of helpers who will help you to get back into, the, into your body. Your will to be there is respected. The second problem, how you do trans channeling is, uh, is, uh, for me, it's very simple. When I say I, and I mean my Max, it's a conscious channel. When I say I, and I mean someone else, it's trans channel. It doesn't necessarily mean that I have to go, but <laughs> so I, I kind of, I'm present there and I explain to the public that, you know, I don't live completely. It's just me and Yogananda or me and Z or me and someone else. And uh, I just speak uh, for, for their, from their perspective for the convenience of conversation while I'm still here. And for me, I never left the body. Uh, not, not never completely leave the body, but for, for some people, they do completely leave the body. Like um, Angie said that for the purpose of pure channeling, she would walk into the kitchen and stay there while somebody would, <laughs> would speak through her body. That's that's perfect trans channeling. Like that's you know you're in the kitchen, pay attention to what happens in the kitchen, and you're not present. That's that's like a good demonstration that you you made it. I never made it, so I can't tell that I I know what it is. And yeah, do you do any trans channeling? I pretend to be doing, but in fact, I I tell people that you know I'm uh, I'm present. Uh, at some point, I present more, and some point, I present less. And for me, the indication that uh, the being is here is that uh, I feel them in my body and I feel the energy and it is very easy for me to speak with their energy and with their personality and my personality sort of shifts away uh, but I, I never lose control and if I actually don't participate then I cannot speak actually so I that's all I can tell about myself uh, I, I, I know there were cases of clear possession, like recently we had a case where somebody just entered the body of the person and the person was gone, like shifted away and somebody was speaking some other language and it was clear uh, case of possession, but the guy who was possessing was actually pretty positive. So we couldn't, uh, we couldn't uh, be uh, upset about it. We, we just took it as easy, but uh, he came for a reason and uh, and when he was asked to leave, he left. So that was a clear position. So yeah, trans channel in this position, yeah. Um, and invited position on invitation. I never had it uh, had that experience. But I had invitation. I invite I invite uh, aliens to visit me in my uh, in my meditations. And once I had a visit by um, a blue Pleiadian of Lakesh race, which is I guess. I forgot the name, so Blue Pleiadians. And um, he entered in my body. First I felt like terrible, uh, nightmarish feeling. And I recognized this nightmare from my childhood. But then I realized it was the alien that comes and that's expected and I let him come in. And uh, there was nothing terrible. It was just a different feeling of completely lose, losing control of the situation. Uh, and he entered my body and I felt myself to be in two bodies at the same time. One is mine, so I could mind fingers, and and one and the same body was very different. It was fat and short, and uh, the fingers was huge, like very thick fingers and short. And I thought if I wanted that, I could move his body, but I didn't want to interfere, so I just observed the situation. So he was present in my body for 15 minutes. I hope to have a 
a meaningful conversation, but he was silent. He was just present and kind of laying on my bed. I was completely awake. It was, I woke first, then there was experience. And then when they left, I, go, I went to sleep. So I had the experience at least once. So I know that it was for real and it was unmistakable. All right. Um, question? Yep. Did you ask him a question or did you just sit there and... I think I did. I think I did, but I didn't want to disturb the situation much, so I was uh, not persistent. I was like, like, giving them. Uh, it, it's a very good idea when, uh, when in trouble, if uh, nothing hurts your body, just let, let it sleep and see what happens. Like, it happened to me uh, a few other times in different situations where I had like uh, a type of uh, spiritual experience when I was drug drugs through some sort of. Uh, different layers of reality and uh, because I invited that I knew what was happening I just let it slide and I was just an observer and uh, it was fun I visited the the hell just for, 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 for a few seconds but I was able to recognize that I'm in the hell for a few seconds and then I moved forward but uh, uh, it, sometimes it's uh, just fine to to to, to to be guided through different layers and uh, and trust what happens. Otherwise, if you fight it, it's much much more negative. But uh, but I, I mean, it's 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 a question of judgment. If you let it slide or if you just take charge of it. But sometimes you have to take charge. Sometimes you have to claim. And now is enough. And we, I want my body back, or I want the channeler's body back. I want the Jim to come back in his body. So sometimes you have to take charge. So I, I think David is best candidate for, uh, for uh, do, would you mind channeling on, on camera? I don't think I'm to that level yet, Max. Oh, okay, okay. What, Does you. anyone, is anyone like uh, easy, easy going to channel on camera? Well, Just, I, I still have a question. Like I, I feel them around me uh -huh. and if, so what do I say? I, I ask them, I invite them, and I ask, like right now I have Ezekiel, and I have Babaji. Wow. But, and I, but Ezekiel wanted to be in French. I said, Ezekiel, it can't be in French. That's the, and, and Babaji, well, I feel his presence all the time, though, but he really, really wants me to channel him, but I don't know how. Anya, help me. <laughs> <laughs> Is well, it Carol speaking? I just didn't recognize. <laughs> it's Carol? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Max, go ahead. Tell. What? Tell. Oh, yeah. Oh, if, how if, she, remember how you do um, Yogananda sometimes? Well, you just have to, if you feel struggle, you are blocking it. So first of all, you are blocking it. You cannot block. If you feel that he wants you to channel him, try to write it down, whatever you feel he's saying, or you have to really relax. There's something you are blocking. You're putting like a block wall. A fear, of course. A fear. But I'm you know not what? sure what he's if, if it's going to be him that's going to speak or if it's just my consciousness. Or well, just... write it down. You are just but for yourself. You don't have to do it like publicly. If you are afraid that you're going to say something wrong, no one's going to judge you. Number one, I this is my request. We should never judge anyone. And judgment is a negativity. So um, I think judgment is the biggest mistakes humans make because they don't hurt anyone else by themselves because you are actually creating this negative energy around you. But you have to, let's say, you can try to do it by yourself. If you can do it now, what would you think? That he, well, let's, he, say, let's say he's trying to tell you right now something, what would be? Let, well, just go, just well, go. He, what, what he wants to say is, is uh, for, well, what I hear him saying right now is, uh, um, uh, thank you all for, 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 for being here. Um, he sends a lot of love. Um, he's talking about uh, the uh, energy. He is um, uh, very happy that um, 
the energy is finally uh, changing. And um, to ignore the, um, the uh, government uh, negative uh, propaganda and all this new stuff of racism and all this stuff that they're talking about because it it really is uh, causing division and he wants uh, us to uh, really concentrate on really meditating and eating right and really going outside and um, really feel the energy uh, uh, and, 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 and to really um, work on moving the energy, not just sit there and absorb it, but to feel it in all her, our cells and organs, our eyes, the way we speak. Um, he's saying that by doing that, it will help uh, elevate our energy, which, you know, it's all stuff that we all know. Thank you, Babaji. But, but he's saying we keep repeating this to really elevate our energy because by doing so, we will be able to see uh, more um, energy coming from other dimension uh, really appearing more before us. And we really need to uh, stop having uh, fear of, 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 of the unknown because um, – if, if you keep having fear of the unknown, then, then the unknown will not reveal itself because they think that if they do, and it's different to what we are uh, used to seeing, then, um, then we, then we won't be able to be accepting to the, um, the strange presence that we feel it's strange, but it's been here all along. And because we are so conditioned of always seeing the same things all the time that um, we need to accept uh, different forms and um, be more if, if 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 we do have fear then to um, ask them who they are what they are where they're from ask questions um, he's saying why would you have fear you have pictures of ascended masters you have pictures of angels and higher beings he said, your only fear that you have is from um, the ones that say that you can be deceived or from shapeshifters, which is normal. But mostly your guides will not introduce to, to mostly at the beginning to this kind of thing so that you can feel more uh, accepting to what is around us. Um, practice on your breathing. Breath is life. He says he is sorry for all the awful things that are going on right now, but we really need to stick together because this wave is coming quicker than we think. Yay, thank you, Babaji. And mostly throughout the energy of the sun and the summer, um, but we have to also expect that as the light gets stronger, that there will also be by less and less now because the yin and the yang is starting to become one. So before the stronger the light would be, the darker the darker would be. But now it will be more in a balanced way. Do you understand this? I heard the same thing. Um, 
That's he's, wonderful. Keep on going. He's becoming stronger now oh, by, oh, Bob, she, uh, he's really um, uh, tantalizing my body right now. Um, I, he's excited that, wow, he says, Carol, you can do this. He calls me Shanti. That's the name he initiated me with. Shanti, you can do this. And I thank you all for being present here today. And please um, be happy. Be more in a blissful state. And we need to work more consciously in a more blissful and happy state. That is the joy of children always dancing the light and this is what we need from all of you is to be more blissful and in the light and the more you dance into this the more we can dance with you yay okay thank you you did it wow i did Great it. job i did it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounded wonderful. Yep. Um, so, okay. So at this, I want to close the recording and then we'll do off record for the practice for others. And I will leave soon. Okay. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for the listening and we'll continue off record. Turning off the recording. Max. Thank you, Max. Have a great oh, no, no, I'm not leaving yet. I'm just turning off the recording. Thank you. All right. All right. Recording is...